we uh, talked about uh, planning, writing, and that's promoting. Because when I talk about this in my WordPress class, you might have designed the best website, or you take the e-commerce class. You might have the best e-commerce website. No one knows about it. Does it really matter then? Does your site matter? So then there's promotion. In the real world, promotion, we see it all the time. It's promotion, marketing, advertising. Let me ask you guys, how did you learn about these this class? Google. The catalog, you googled it maybe, word of mouth. Lots of ways maybe that you found out about these classes. Maybe you took a previous class of mine and I told you, there's another class you might be interested. I was marketing to you, advertising, promoting. So in the real world, promotion is very important. In the digital world as well. Because I might have a great website and a great blog, no one knows about it because there's a million other great websites and blogs about your own topic. Um, so here's a few concepts about promoting. We've got um, yeah, so related. Anyway, promoting. The first one, social for them. The second, social for you. I'll show you examples that will make more sense in a moment. Make sure your readers can easily share to Facebook, Twitter, Google+, etc. If your content is good enough, people will want their friends to see, thus turning them into advertisers for you. So on just about any site that I can pull up, you're going to see examples of uh, the ability to share. Share on Google+, Plus, on Twitter, on Facebook, whatever. You're going to see um, um, the ability for people, because they're, on, they're online all the time. You might not be, but everyone is online to some degree. On, um, online, maybe you spend time on Facebook, Twitter, etc., and then so you want free advertising. Like here, this one's got a lot of attention. Uh, this one's been tweeted a lot and posted on Facebook and shared on Google+. Plus. Free advertising. Free traffic from those other networks to my website, to this post. You see that over here, for example, just taking a random article over here on real estate. How to successfully invest in real estate with Brandon Turner. Uh, so if someone reads that, that article was good. There's going to be a spot somewhere right here. Uh, share it on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, Reddit, etc. So make a way for people to share on their social networks. We're going to see that on WordPress you can turn that on. We did talk about a little bit of that last time. Turning on the share feature on WordPress. So you want this. You want people to share. That's why social for them. Let people take your content for you and send it off to other accounts, to their friends and family. So promoting, uh, turn your readers into advertisers for you. And that's just simply having a way for them to easily tweet it, share it on Facebook, etc. On the other side of that cone is social. On the other side of that coin is social for you. Share your content on your relevant social media channels. Share a link to your blog post on your personal LinkedIn from the company Twitter or from your Instagram, for example. So you should have this website, this blog. But you should also have a Facebook, a Twitter, etc. There's so many social networks out there, and they're coming out all the time. And um, in my social media class. We talk about setting up profiles to the popular networks, how to use them, how to get followers, how to get traffic. So everyone's heard of Facebook and Twitter and so forth, but people sometimes have a perception that, yeah, that's the place where I talk with my friends and family, we share cat pictures, all of that irrelevant stuff. But marketers know that social media is big because this is where your content goes viral, where you get the traffic and such. So I wrote something on my blog, and I've got a Twitter, so I'll mention it on my Twitter. I wrote something on my blog, I'll mention it on Google+. I'll put a post on, about it on Instagram. Whatever way I use the social network, 
to give me a little more uh, traffic and exposure, I use it. I can do it on my personal accounts, on the business account, whatever, as long as it's relevant. It might not be too relevant to post an article that doesn't make sense to a particular Google Plus community, for example. So that's that publicize feature that's built into WordPress. You're going to post something and it's automatically then going to go over to someone else, I mean to your own Facebook account for someone else to read. So promoting, that's both sides of the coin. Turn your readers into advertisers for you and then on your own use your own social media to spread the word. So you might have 10 followers on Twitter. That's fine. That's 10 potential readers. You might have 1,000 likes on Facebook. That's 1,000 potential readers. And the thing about this is just like in the real world marketing, everyone gets those Bed Bath & Beyond coupons, but how many of you have used one in the last month, in the last year, in the last year perhaps? So I just got one the other day. I might use it. It's one of the $5 ones. So um, there's some amount of people that are going to completely ignore. The majority are going to ignore your call to action. Please read my blog. But let's say even 1% of your followers follows through. Out of 10 followers you have on Twitter, at least one read. Well, that one reader could like your post enough that they share it to their 5,000 followers. So you now reach 5,000 even though you really only had 10 direct followers. So if I've got 5,000 followers, I could have many of those followers. What's 5% 5 of 5,000? 50? I could have 50 people that um, could, could be influencers, that could have a lot of followers themselves. I know that my company does this for the clients that we have. We write a blog post for a client. We post it and such. We put it on our Twitter and such. But then in Twitter, we also tag relevant food people related to that blog post and they then often retweet and so then that blog post reached more people than the ones that we had reached originally. And so integrating social media is very valuable in all aspects online. Number three was mentioned previously. I'll mention it again. Comments, I believe, are in a transition phase. This may change at some point that it's relevant to have comments. Comments may at some point not be too much trouble and therefore the search engines don't care about comments anymore. Or the search engines may decide comments are going to be very important because then you need to moderate your comments. Who knows? The search engines change and the search engines give us and the search engines take us. So if we do have commenting ability on our blog, I recommend that we set it to moderate. Don't let any comments show up until I approve them. WordPress will have a queue that lists all your comments. And so I'm going to say about that that Letting people comment on your posts could give you positive SEO results. I don't know, no one really knows how much you're going to get out of that because all of this SEO stuff is proprietary. It's trade secrets. So Google is going to tell us the do's and don'ts, but they're not going to tell us exactly that if you ever use this keyword, you'll be penalized. They're not going to tell you. If you ever have seven negative comments in a row, you're going to get this penalized. They're not going to tell you these trade secrets because then Bing will copy it. Bing is not going to tell you, don't do this or do this, because then Google's going to copy it. They all copy each other. So they don't tell you like the, the, the most deepest secrets of how their search engines work because the competitor will steal it. So I don't know how relevant comments will be. You might turn off your comments completely from your site, but if you engage in everything else here, no big deal. Um, 
So that's why I said it could give you positive results, but definitely moderate. Definitely remove the negative comments and the spam comments and all of that. Keep it civil. It's your blog. It's your property. You can do that. You can remove mean posts. You can ban mean people. Fine. Keep it civil. Keep it relevant. Um, keep a good community. Then the community will grow and they'll continue to post and that'll give you traffic. On the flip side, I recommend for you to engage in commenting. By that I mean visit other people's websites. So let's say I've got my bakery website. I'm going to go over to brownibaker.com and I'm going to look at these different blog posts and then I'm going to, if they allow it, I'm going to go to the part about adding a comment. So okay, I read that. Looks great. Getting hungry. Scroll down here. And then there's a part somewhere right here. Leave a comment. Okay, I'm going to recommend this. Here's why. I'm going to back up. So Carol from Carol's Chatter, Carl, Paola, Robinson, Denise. These comments recently have been posted. Some have a picture, some not, but Denise and Robin, their comments are not as relevant from an SEO point of view. Can you tell why? Yes. There's no link to their website. I can tell that at a glance because there's no underlined link on their name, their name, but there is an underlined link on Paola's and down here on the web browser, carolschatter.blogspot. Over here, Carl. Sweet, sweet tea, sweetie .com. They've got links back to their website, backlinks. They could potentially be getting traffic from this popular site back to their own site. For whatever reason, uh, then Robin and Denise did not link. Maybe they don't have a website. That's okay. That's why I'm saying I recommend commenting on other people's sites because you could get a link back to your site. Question. Yeah, do you, uh, in order, how do you do that, get a link? Do you have to sign up with the, with the blog? Oh, down there, okay. Depending on how the site is set up. Some sites require you to sign in before yeah. you can leave a comment, right? Exactly. So, you might want to, it might be relevant, but there's plenty of other sites that are going to be like this. Add your name and email, those are required. Website address, not required, I'm going to require it for this class. If you've got a website, advertise your website. There you go. Post it. This one moderates it. Your post is not going to show up as soon as you click submit. They look at it, they approve it. If you seem spammy in your comment, they're not going to let it go through, and therefore you won't get a link back. But if you write something relevant on topic like everyone else is doing... Do you recommend putting the URL down there? In other words, if it's already linked by no. the name? No, I don't recommend that. <clears throat> That's starting to look spammy. I'm not sure why they let it through because she's already got her link back to her website and she's saying, look at my website. Maybe I, I wouldn't have approved that one. That frosting looks amazing. That's not a great comment, plus her, her link there. I wouldn't have let that one through. But maybe she's already got cache with her other posts that she posts good things. Yes? Would you, would it be a good idea to do something a thoughtful mock -up? That frosting looks amazing. I mean, while wow, that's really going to make you want to click on her. Exactly. So you want to have a nice, thoughtful, maybe yes. even a longer comment that would maybe make somebody wonder to do the website. Yes, so they might be a little lenient. I see this one is also not that important of a comment. Kind of advertising yourself. But I guess, you know, it takes effort to moderate. So this one went through. If, I, if this was my site, I probably would not have let this one go through because she's just saying, I would love for you to stop by my website. I don't care. Why are you posting that on my post? <laughs> so um, some websites then will have a strict gatekeeper and some will not. And uh, if you want to get some traffic from another website, comment on their website. Some traffic will come over. But to get past these gatekeepers and you won't know how strict they are until you try 
write something relevant. Lol, I love the story about the cake and it looks delish. Cannot wait for my baker husband to try it. He loves cranberries. Cool. Nothing over the top about visit my site, buy my thing. But a link. Well, that one doesn't have a link. But it could have a link, a, di a discreet link back to the site. So yeah, write a sentence or two that keeps the conversation going. Great story. Thanks for fessing up. Oh, okay, you know, that's not so bad, but they're not trying to get a, a link back. Anyone know Italian? So how does commenting in Italian or other languages, what is that? Like you're saying, this sounds good, this doesn't sound spammy, this one's trying to legit, uh, uh, legitimate comment. This one's like, well, how, what do you do? What, what, is that, what, is that, what, is that, what does that do? In a sense, the, the thing that's good is for that person. There's a link back to their website. The moderator could have, could have denied the post because a large part of the reading audience perhaps cannot read it. So it's up to the person, up to the person that owns the blog to decide on, uh, on what goes on their site. So they let it go through. And like I'm saying, in general, I'm kind of seeing that they're not that strict about comments. Um, so they let that one go through. It might be a very nice comment. Maybe someone does know Italian on the site. Um, and uh, there is some value to people commenting on your site, like I'm saying. The search engines see how popular your site is. Popularity breeds popularity. If the search engines see that there are comments, 15 comments here, the search engines might say, okay, let's rank them a little higher than the competitor. But who knows? Maybe at a certain point the search engines will say this is not so important. Facebook is more important. Twitter is more important. Google Plus is more important. So it doesn't hurt to have comments, but you should moderate them. And it's up to you to moderate them how you want. So at this point, there's no evidence that commenting helps. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of at a, at a crossroads. No, because this is difficult. This is, this, you know, unfortunately we, we know that if we go online because of anonymity, it's so easy for people to be abusive. Twitter has a big problem with this. There's been so many horrible instances of bullying on Twitter. I follow uh, comic authors and, and game authors, and especially, unfortunately, for women, they have a very hard time on social media. You can get attacked for even the most benign opinion, suddenly a thousand uh, so-called fans and start to harass someone just because they had a contrary opinion. You didn't like my video game, I hate you, and then they're gonna start to spam you. Twitter and a lot of these things need to get that into shape to stop this bullying. You have the ability on your own blog to weed out the bad stuff. And so that's why I don't know how relevant it is to the search engines about having comments, especially when comments like this are not that useful. That's self-serving, and you are going to be self-serving to some degree, but um, within reason, within relevancy. So that's why I wrote here, things are changing, I don't know. They might be useful, they might not. If they are going to have comments, moderate them. But on the flip side, go comment. Because if there's websites out there that accept comments, go ahead and comment. Have a link back to your site, it may help you. And then guest blogging is tied to something else I said earlier. Offer to blog on other people's relevant websites. Add your expertise to their site. Your author page should have links back to your own blogs, thus driving traffic to you. As you become more well-known in your niche, this will help your SEO. <clears throat> so, um, let's see if I can see any here. Um, these might be ghost-written, or they might be written by the original author of the site. Um, I'm not quite seeing that these have individual authors attached to them, but I showed you back on Investor Junkie that there they, they, they do have different authors writing about these topics, and then they would have a link to their own author page on the site. And the point of that is free marketing, free advertising back to my website. So then an extra step is you write a hundred words. You connect with some other website related, maybe not your direct competition. That would be weird. Why are you going to write a great blog post for your competition? Maybe you're going to write for someone related to food on my bakery. 
like I said, a restaurant. I'm not in competition with that restaurant. They, they're, they're a fancy restaurant, and I sell cupcakes. But I'm going to write for them to, to talk about the special creation using the, those truffles. And so I blog on their website. They continue to have content that drives traffic to their website. And I could drive traffic to my website because I have an author page or links back to my website. And especially if your company, because many of us are small businesses and we are the face of our company perhaps, it, as you create content throughout the web on other people's websites, and if I write an article for Investor Junkies and I start to build a following of people that like my investment advice, I'm then becoming <clears throat> known in this space and possibly getting traffic. So in the totality of it, the more of these things that you do or are able to do, the better. Don't beat yourself up if you can't do all of these things. The more of these that you do. If you've never done any of these things with blogging, you have plenty of things to think about. Any questions then about any of these things on this list? Many of these are uh, to a degree self-explanatory. There's a couple that I'll show you directly in WordPress. Uh, so let's take a moment now to shift gears and we're going to log into the WordPress site and I'll show you a couple places where you would apply these things.